We're really excited about bringing aerospace technology into the energy industry for a lot of reasons. In this case, it's exceptionally cool to be able to find what's been a problem in one industry, namely condensation and supersonic flows, and actually find that it's a solution to carbon capture. I'm Tony Castro Giovanni from Ascent Laboratories here on Long Island. I uh, work with ATK on a wide number of uh, energy related projects. RPE was looking for uh, ideas that could be developed in relatively short time, but to, to bring revolutionary new technologies, ideas that would completely change the way people think about solving a problem. We refer to the system as ICES, which stands for Inertial Carbon Extraction System. Uh, the test article that's behind me is the size for approximately 0.3 megawatts of equivalent power plant. The small footprint of our system opens up the possibilities of retrofitting to a wide variety of existing coal power plants and doesn't require that we have to leverage the technology only for newly built power plants. An equivalent amine system would be approximately 10 stories tall by, it would look like a city block, frankly. I'm Bon Kalaig, I'm a program manager here at ATK, specifically managing the ISIS program. ATK is an aerospace, defense, and commercial products company, primarily known for our solid rocket engines, which are the ones used on the space shuttle. Supersonic condensation in wind tunnels can be a real problem because the condensate, which is either ice or liquid, can actually damage the articles that's under test. But in this case, in ISIS, we actually want the condensate to form because that's the means by which we can extract from the flow. What we do is take flue gas from a power plant and compress it slightly, run it through a converging diverging nozzle, which accelerates it supersonically. And as a result of doing this, the pressure and temperature of the gas drops precipitously, and that enables the carbon dioxide to essentially freeze out as dry ice. RP has been a really good collaborator, lending us a fair amount of autonomy, but at the same time lending us also technical expertise when needed. For the ISIS program, the first thing that we executed was models for the design to essentially build the first prototype and to look at the economic modeling. Uh, then we went into a testing and experimental phase, which is continuing through today, and that's primarily where the uh, funding has been used. With our testing so far, we're very, very pleased with the results. We feel that uh, the RPE relationship has, in fact, validated our concept as, uh, as truly viable for carbon capture. Uh, we were able to leverage our relationship with RPE to get a, a grant from the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority, or NYSERDA, and they further validated us by providing some funding to offset uh, the cost share on the program, uh, bring jobs to New York State, and to leverage this technology for the, uh, the coal activity that, uh, that exists in New York. Pulverized coal power plant looking to use carbon capture or integrate that into the site. ISIS makes a lot of sense because the environmental impact is very low since we don't use any hazardous chemicals. So the footprint of the device is also very small which allows for retrofitting to existing power plants. Traditional amine scrubbing systems are in the $60 to $70 per ton of CO2 removed whereas the ISIS system has the potential of being less than half of that. At a certain point the cost of CO2 removed becomes competitive with the actual cost of CO2 for industrial purposes so people will, will buy the CO2 we produce and use it for enhanced oil recovery and other uh, applications where CO2 is needed in industry. It's key for the government to fund these quote-unquote high-risk, high-payoff technologies that would be otherwise very, very difficult for private companies to justify internal research and development. The timelines are too long for your typical public company to be able to invest resources for something that won't get to market in the next two to three years. The role of the federal government is really crucial for this kind of large-scale, long-timeline technology development.